Great view. So perhaps it's out of curiosity or out of need, but we decide to try to meditate. Now we could choose any kind of meditation. We could choose TM, Zen, Tibetan, centering practice or centering prayer, but we find ourselves here and are curious enough or choose to learn mindfulness meditation. And that has a particular aim and a particular way of relating to experience that orients around suffering and its end. That's where it says it leads anyway. Curious minds want to check it out. This too is what the Buddha advocates. He says, don't blindly follow anything or anyone. He says, check it out. See for yourself, eh, hipasiko. But in order to do that, in order to check out mindfulness, we have to see where we are and then measure it against the mindfulness map that shows us the ways and means by which we can move towards, oh, less suffering, more ease of well-being, that direction. Cause and effect is, for example, an easy way to assess right or wise view. It is one that is explicitly offered in the definition itself. Are we on the right track? We'll check it out. But, and, that means we who want to check it out have to learn how to see from the perspective of mindful, caring attention that is guided by a north star of wise view that sees suffering in the paths that lead out of it. And this alone is a useful measure for us in our practice. Just being able to tell, to discern whether or not we're going in the right direction in a general way is really helpful. And if I say it that way, we all know what I mean, right? If I say, hey, are we going in the right direction? You get what I'm asking. Whether you are headed where you say you are headed, which also implies the question, do you know where you are right now? There's no fussing about the word right, is there, in this moment. We all know what I mean. Are you headed in the direction you say you want to go? And if it's less suffering and more ease of well-being, check it out. Right view gives us the guiding direction. And it offers ways of assessing and navigating towards this particular direction of less suffering, more ease of well-being. And at some point, we'll need to get more specific, more granular. We'll need to learn how to read the street signs, how to feel the wind change in order to adjust our sail to stay the course. But for now, are you headed in a direction of unhelpful trouble or not? Well, to answer this question, you need to know where you are. Aspirationally, I really don't wish to cause anyone harm ever, if I can help it, really. That's my aspiration. But that's not realistic 24 seven. In a moment of disagreement, I can forget and respond sharply, right? It's humbling and it's true. No worries though. Because mindfulness says this is all practice. Our, our everyday life is more of an improvisational act than anything else. So let yourself practice. Let yourself slip up. Of course we're going to. Mindfulness is not a steady state. We keep orienting back toward it. We begin again, see the error of our ways and gently adjust accordingly. Oh my darling, I'm so sorry. You know, like that. The practice is coming back and deliberately beginning again, orienting toward more ease and less suffering, toward letting go of pushing and bracing, and toward feeling for a friendlier posture of caring attention and towards our well being. This is right view. See where you are and orient. And we learn to adjust into this compassionate way of seeing ourselves in the world. We don't know that right now. We're learning how to do that. So check, check where you are right now. No judgment, just with a friendly gaze, see. 
Notice, are you feeling a little grumpy? Tired? Are you still irritated or upset from something or someone else, but upset just the same? Take a breath. Allow the ripples of disturbance to toss the boat around while you learn how to stay steady and keep the boat afloat. <laughs> As the sea is calm, still keep adjusting toward well-being. Don't stop. Just keep going in that direction. <laughs> You know, much of the time we live on autopilot, much of the time we live on memory, but memory is faulty. We think we left the keys on the table by the door, but actually we forgot to take them out of our pocket. <laughs> or have you ever returned after a long time away to a once familiar place? So long that you think you remember where all of the signs are, but now, I don't know, the distance seems a little off. Some things seem nearer to one another. Other things seem way far apart. Landmarks disappear altogether. We remember the place differently, don't we? Check the map. <laughs> That's check the map. Use the North Star to guide. Oh my goodness. I may think I am speaking nicely in a moment. I may believe wholeheartedly in a moment I am right and I am speaking nicely. But is that what a trusted friend who's watching the moment, is that what they'd see? Is that what they'd think, whether they spoke it or not, that Susan was speaking nicely? Check, no harm, right? We can prevent some harm if we check. How does it feel in there? Discern whether it's skillful or not. The Buddha's teachings are a map, adjust out of our way of relating to the world and put mindfulness at the helm, behind the wheel, using right view as the compass that guides the way <laughs> toward non-harm and, and goodwill, toward ease of well-being. We can do this. This is what the Buddha said anyway. Check it out. Check it out. We can check it out. We can check it out right now. It's for our welfare.